Today's topic is how to design a reinforced concrete column. There are different ways on how to design a reinforced concrete column. But for this lecture, I will be using the interaction diagram based from the manual called the Reinforced Concrete Design Handbook, a companion to ACI 318-14, Volume 3, Design Aids by the American Concrete Institute. And for this design, all units are in English since the interaction diagrams we will be using are in English units. To start the design, first, we will be using these material and section properties. For the FC prime, which is the concrete strength, equals to 4.0 kilopound per square inch. FY or the rebar yield strength, equals to 60.0 kilopound per square inch. The clear span length of our column is 3 meters or 9.84 feet. The distance from the outer fiber to the center of the longitudinal bars, D prime is equals to 2.5 inches. Let us assume we have a column dimension of 15 by 25 inches, and let's say we have an 8 pieces of number 9 rebars. And for the loadings, we have ultimate axial load PU, which is equals to 150 kilopounds, ultimate moment along x-axis, MUX, which is equals to 2,400 kilopound inch, ultimate moment along y-axis MUY, which is equals to 1,200 kilopound inch. And for this sample, we will be using a reduction factor phi equals to 0.65 for tied column and 0.75 for spiral column. The very first step is to determine whether our column belongs to a short column or a slender column. Now to check that, we need to calculate for the slenderness ratio, which is a formula, KL over R. For this design, we will assume pin-to-pin -pin connection, so the effective length factor K is equals to 1.0. The radius of gyration R equals 0.3 times the depth of the column. And the slenderness ratio along X is equals to 1.0 times 9.84 times 12 divided by 0.3 times 25, which will give us 15.74. The slenderness ratio along Y is equals to 1.0 times 9.84 times 12 divided by 0.3 times 15, which will give us 26.24. We will compare these two slenderness ratios to the minimum of 34 minus 12 times m1 over m2 and 40, where m1 is the smaller factored end moment, positive if the member is bent in single curvature and negative if bent in double curvature. m2 is the larger factored end moment and it is always positive. For this sample, we will assume m1 over m2 equals to zero, but if you do have the result of m1 and m2, you can try substituting those values and compare it to KL over R. So, 34 minus 12 times M1 over M2 will give us 34. And since 34 is smaller than 40, we will compare 34 to the slenderness ratio KL over R at both axes. And since 26.24 and 15.74 are all less than 34, therefore, we have a short column. And perhaps in our future videos, we will also give a sample of a slender column. The second step is to calculate for the eccentricities at both axes. From the loadings above, we can solve for the eccentricity along x axis, E sub x, which is equals to the ultimate moment along y, muy, divided by the ultimate axial load, pu, then this will give us 8 inches. And the eccentricity along y axis, E sub y, which is equals to the ultimate moment along x, mux, divided by the ultimate axial load, pu, will give us 16 inches. The third step is to calculate for the nominal axial load capacity about the x-axis and y-axis. Now to calculate for the nominal axial load capacity, we will use the interaction diagrams from the manual. The parameters we need are the gamma, steel ratio, rho, and the constant E over h. Let us solve first for the gamma, which is equals to the depth minus 2 times the concrete cover minus 2 times the diameter of the lateral ties minus the diameter of the main reinforcement. But since the distance between the outer fiber to the center of the longitudinal bars is already given, which is 2.5 inches, we will be using the 2.5 inches. Gamma is now equals to 25 minus 2 times 2.5 divided by 25, which will result to 0.8. And then the steel ratio, rho, which is equals to the area of steel, divided by the gross area. And the result is 0 
and finally, the constant E over H, which is equals to 16 divided by 25, and the result is 0 0.64. As you can see from this interaction diagram, R4-60.8, a green line which represents the constant E over H which is equals to 0 0.64, the orange curve which represents the steel ratio, rho, 0 0.0213, and estimating the R sub n, we have a value of 0 0.185. The R sub n has a formula equals to the nominal axial load capacity, times the eccentricity, divided by the Fc prime, times gross area, times the height. And from this formula we can get the value of the nominal axial load capacity along x-axis, Pnx. And substituting all those values, we get the value of PNX equals to 434 kilopounds. For the nominal axial load capacity about the y-axis, gamma is equals to 10 divided by 15, and we have a value of 0 0.667. The steel ratio, rho, which is equals to 0 0.0213, and the constant E over H, which is equals to 8 divided by 15 and the result is 0 0.533. In this case, we need to interpolate for the gamma equals to 0 0.667. We will use the interaction diagram R4-60.6 and R4-60.7, since it is between 0 0.6 and 0 0.7. From the interaction diagram R4-60.6 for gamma equals to 0 0.6, with corresponding steel ratio of 0 0.0213, we have the value of R sub n equals to 0 0.158. And then from the interaction diagram, R4-60.7 for gamma equals to 0 0.7, we have R sub n equals to 0 0.175. So, we will now apply interpolation from those values, and we have 0 0.175 minus R sub n divided by 0 0.7 minus 0 0.667 is equals to R sub n minus 0 0.158 divided by 0 0.667 minus 0 0.6, and then the result of R sub n would be 0 0.169. After this, we can solve for the nominal axial load capacity along y-axis, PNY, which would result to 475 kilopounds. And then the fourth step is to determine the axial load capacity of the section when the load is placed with zero eccentricity. Having a formula of P sub zero equals 0 0.85 times the concrete strength times the gross area plus the rebar yield strength times the area of steel. And this will give us a value of P sub zero equals to 1755 kilopounds. The fifth step is to find the nominal axial load capacity, PNI, by using the Briesler expression. 1 over PNI is equals to 1 over PNX plus 1 over PNY minus 1 over P sub 0, where PNI is the nominal axial load capacity of the section when the load is placed at a given eccentricity along both axes. PNX is the nominal axial load capacity of the section when the load is placed at an eccentricity EX. PNY is the nominal axial load capacity of the section when the load is placed at an eccentricity EY, and P sub 0 is the nominal axial load capacity of the section when the load is placed with zero eccentricity. And now, plugging in those values, we have 1 over PNI equals to 1 over 434 plus 1 over 475 minus 1 over 1755. And the result is PNI equals to 260 kilopounds. After this, we can now check if this satisfies the equation that the reduction factor times the nominal axial load capacity is greater than or equal to the actual or ultimate axial load. Since the reduction factor times the nominal axial load capacity, PNI, which is equals to 169 kilopounds is greater than the 150 kilopounds ultimate axial load. Therefore, it is safe to use 15 inches by 25 inches with eight pieces of number nine rebars. And that's it for this video, thank you for watching, please like and subscribe. In our next video, we will continue with the design of the shear reinforcement or the lateral ties of the same column.